plan for uh, today is to move through, take a look at some of the problems uh, on assignment six. Um, in fact, I will go through the first four problems. The fifth problem is just an, another example of one of the other four. And, and certainly you folks can go through that uh, by Thursday. And if you have any problems on it, I can resolve those problems first thing and then we'll move into discussion of the second <coughs> circumstance of hypothesis testing and that is a circumstance in which you're comparing two group means with one another rather than one group mean and the population mean. And that's the classic research paradigm, for example, the treatment group control group paradigm in research. Let's first look at uh, some of these problems from assignment six. Um, the first one of them, there's now heavy equipment outside. Heavy equipment outside. This has been a joy this semester, I'm sure, for everybody. Um, what we ought to do have done is, is actually located ourselves over there. Everybody move over there and I'll just look that way. Um, Question one on assignment six. A researcher predicts that students receiving financial aid miss fewer classes than students in general. Given that statement, what is the research hypothesis? What would you like me to, what symbol would you like between X bar and mu? A researcher predicts that students receiving financial aid miss fewer classes than students in general. Uh, the fewer sign. Would everybody agree that the research hypothesis is that X bar is less than mu? Because what we have here is we will find in order to test this hypothesis, the researcher selects a random sample of 158 students receiving students receiving financial aid. Yes. So obviously it's that group of students who are receiving financial aid who are represented by X, X bar. The uh, speculation is that those students miss fewer classes than students in general so that the research hypothesis is that X bar will be less than mu. Which means first of all that the null hypothesis is that x bar will be greater than or equal to mu. And it means, second, that the test should be one or two tailed. <coughs> How many tails does the, should the test be? One tail. Is there any question about this? A number of students have, have answered correctly <coughs> that this requires a one tailed test. It requires just a one-tailed test because you have to test only for negative difference. You do not have to test for positive difference. In order to test this hypothesis, the researcher selects a random sample of 158 students receiving financial aid. That is, N is 158. On average, this group missed 2.41 classes during the previous semester. That is, X bar <laughs> equals 2.41. The overall absentee rate, that is mu, equals 2.74 classes. With a standard deviation of 2.25. That is, that's the standard deviation that you're given refers like the score 2.74 to the overall st student body, to students in general. That is, it is sigma. It's the standard deviation of the population, which is 2.25. <coughs> You're also then told if alpha is set at 0.01, if alpha is 0.01, what is the critical test statistic value? What is the observed test statistic value? And third, would you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? 
Would you agree that we're in situation one, what we described as situation one, a situation in which you're comparing x bar with mu, n is large, and sigma is known. The first step in this process is to define the critical value of the test statistic. And in this case, that test statistic is z. What is the critical value of, of z if the test is one-tailed and alpha is 0.01 and you're testing for negative difference? Negative 2.33. One person, brave, one brave soul, says minus 2.33. I would agree with you. How did you get that? The infamous chart. The infamous chart. Where else? That's, that's an excellent answer. I uh, provided you, and, and Healy provides you, uh, in Healy in Table 8.1, with a series of critical Z values given levels of alpha 0.05 and 0.01 and the number of tails in the test, one or two. And when the test is one tailed and alpha is 0.01, the critical z-score is either minus 2.33 or plus 2.33. It's minus 2.33 if you're testing for negative difference and plus 2.33 if you're testing for positive difference. And here we're testing for negative difference. So that the critical z-score is minus 2.33. The second step then was to compute the observed or the obtained value of the test statistic. And in this instance, you do it by invoking the formula x bar minus mu divided by sigma, which is known, over the square root of n. Would everybody agree? It's now simply a matter of, of plugging in the values. That is, x bar is 2.41 minus mu, which is 2.74, divided by sigma, which is 2.25, divided by the square root of n, which is 158. And I will get out my 120-year-old uh, calculator. <coughs> Would anybody agree that uh, the observed score is minus 1.84. I would agree with myself. I got, there's at least one person out there who would agree with me. That, that's enough. In the third step now is to evaluate the null hypothesis. That is to decide whether you would reject the null hypothesis. That is, you would conclude that students receiving financial aid miss significantly fewer classes than students in general, or whether you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is, you would conclude that students receiving financial aid do not miss significantly fewer classes than students in general. Do you reject the null hypothesis, or do you fail to reject the null hypothesis? Let me ask this. Is there anybody who believes that you reject the null hypothesis? Is there anybody who says, I have no idea, but momentarily, the smart money says, Douglas is going to tell me. Are we all agreed, then, that you fail to reject the null hypothesis? We're into that uh, familiar situation. We have the sampling distribution 
of sample means at the center of which is mu. We have established a critical region that is 2.33 standard deviations below the mean. That is somewhere down here, minus 2.33 standard deviations. We've isolated, because alpha is 0.01, we've isolated 99% of the scores in this area. The decision rule that we've made, then, is that in order to reject the null hypothesis, the difference score between x bar and mu, when standardized, when converted into units called standard deviations, must be in this critical region. It must be a rare event. It must be Quasimodo, Elephant Man, or a kid who was in my class in fifth grade. Head the size of a balloon. <laughs> Eyes all over the place. Eventually we made a firecracker out of him. Blew his head off and used his head as a football for six weeks. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. It's just a fiction of my demented mind. <laughs> that has now been recorded for posterity. <laughs> this different score is 1.84 standard deviations below the mean. It is not a rare event. It does not depart significantly <coughs> from mu. You therefore fail to reject the null hypothesis. You would fail to reject the null hypothesis if the, if the observed value of z fell anywhere in this range. You would reject the null hypothesis <coughs> only if the obtained value of z was in this critical region, yes? We therefore fail to reject the null hypothesis. We move on to problem two, which is a lot like problem one. Because it says, assume that the researcher in question one did not know the population standard deviation, if we return to question one, did not know the population standard, oh, that's the mean, did not know the population standard deviation, that is, sigma is unknown, but did know that the standard deviation of the sample was 3.12. You're then asked, if alpha is set at 0.05, what is the critical test statistic value, and so on and so on. Much of the information, obviously, between these two uh, situations is redundant. First of all, we're testing the same hypothesis. We're testing the same null hypothesis, and the research involves, the problem involves the same uh, research hypothesis. Alpha is no longer 0.01, but instead 0.05. <coughs> If we're conducting a one-tailed test, testing for negative difference, and alpha is 0.05, what is the critical value of z? Negative 1.65. From either Healy or from a Appendix A or from the, your notes, you should determine that you should be able to, to determine that the critical z score is minus 1.65. That is, we will now reject the null hypothesis if the converted or if the observed uh, value of z is. <coughs> below some, this critical marker that is 1.65 standard deviations below the mean. Yes. 
We're in situation two. A situation in which you're comparing x bar with mu, n is large, and sigma is unknown. So that the observed value of z is given by the formula x bar minus mu divided by s over the square root of n minus 1. Would you agree? Yeah. And given the uh, data that we have, that equals, uh, once again, 2.41 minus 2.74 divided by S, which was 3.12, over the square root of N minus 1. N was 158, so that N minus 1 is 157. I'm getting out the... Standard and trusty. Is there anybody who would, would agree to minus? Is it minus one point three three? We're in the neighborhood. You say minus 1.32, I say minus 1.33. The observed value of z is minus 1.33. Is there anybody who has any question about whether you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? In this situation, you once again fail to reject the null hypothesis. Yes? <coughs> Are there any questions about either problem one or problem two? I'm going to do two more of these. Um, problem three. A researcher predicts that the average GPA of business majors will differ from the average GPA of students in general. In order to test this hypothesis, the researcher selects a random sample of 22 business majors. The average GPA of this group is 2.38 and the standard deviation 0.88. The average GPA of all students is 2.69. If alpha is set at 0 0.01, and then you're asked a standard set of questions. The difference between this situation and situation 1 and situation 2 is what? N is small. So that we don't conduct a Z test, we conduct a T test. So the first step is to identify, or define, the critical value of t. In order to do that, what information do you need to know? How many tails it is? How many tails it has? How you need to know the number of tails involved in the test. And in order to determine the number of tails in the test, you need to know the research hypothesis. And what is the research hypothesis here? X bar, how do you link X bar and mu? It's not we all, to mu. We all agreed that the research hypothesis is that X bar will differ significantly from mu. Because the first sentence of the problem reads, a researcher predicts that the average GPA of business majors will differ from the average GPA of students in general. It doesn't say will be greater than, it doesn't say will be less than. So, should the test be one or two tailed? Because it's a hypothesis simply of difference, you must test for both positive and negative difference so that the test is two-tailed. What other information do you need to know to define the critical value of T? 
you need to know alpha, which you're given as 0.01. And you need to know, what did you say? Degrees of something. Degrees. Be brave. Degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, which are given by n minus 1. N in this case is 22. You're told that in order to test this hypothesis, the researcher selects a random sample of 22 business majors. That is, n equals 22, so that n minus 1 equals 21. You now go to, would you agree, <laughs> Appendix B. When you look at Appendix B, it says level of significance for one tail test. And then there, and level of significance is just another way of saying alpha. And then there are a series of alpha values going ranging from 0 0.10 on the left to 0 0.0005 on the extreme right. There is then a line that says level of significance for two tail test. And then again, there are a series of alpha levels, alpha values, ranging from 0 0.20 on the extreme left to 0 0.001 on the extreme right. We're conducting a two-tailed test with alpha equal to 0 0.01. You therefore go to level of significance for a two-tailed test and look for alpha equal to 0 0.01 beneath that. Would you agree, then, that we're interested in the column of scores headed 63.657? Is there any doubt about that? You then run down that column until you intersect the row associated with degrees of freedom equal to 21. And you discover that the uh, critical value of T is 2.831. That is, because the test is two-tailed, the critical value of T is plus and minus 2.831. Are there any questions about determining the critical value of T? The uh, second part of this uh, process, then, is to calculate the observed value of T. And you do that by invoking the, the formula that we used in the previous situation. That is, T observed equals X bar minus mu divided by S over the square root of N minus 1. And you're told in this problem it says, in order to test this hypothesis, the researcher selects a random sample of 22 business majors. That is, n equals 22. <coughs> the average GPA of this group, that is, the average GPA of the sample, that is, x bar, is 2.38. And the standard deviation, that is, of the sample, that is, S, equals 0 0.88. The average GPA of all students, that is, mu, is 2.69. <coughs> Are there any questions about how you extract this information from the scenario? Yes. Uh, this isn't a question about that, but just what we did previously, um, we got the uh, T critical from Appendix B, but why didn't we use the um, table that um, has the uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.01 to one or two tails? The question is, uh, in defining T critical, why didn't we use that two by two table of uh, scores um, where we have number of, where we have an alpha level 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and then we have number of tails, and we have a one-tail test and a two-tail test, and we have those scores 
arranged in a two by two, yes, with here was, would be plus and minus 1.96 and so on, yes. These are z-scores. These are critical z-scores. And z-scores are insensitive to degrees of freedom. You need only two pieces of information to determine the critical value of z, that is alpha and the number of tails in the test. You don't need to know the degrees of freedom because it is assumed that once sample size is large, that the curve is stable, <coughs> that this normal curve is stable, and, dis and co consistently displays these attributes. When n is small, this curve fluctuates. And in order to be sensitive to that fluctuation, you need to know the degrees of freedom. Okay. Are there any other questions? I was just going to ask if you could, if you wouldn't mind just filling in that table. The you want me to fill in the table again because I, 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 why? I Would you like to hold down the, the mic and... Admit this to all of us. Unfortunately, my attendance record is not outstanding in this class, but... And, and so what you're doing is asking for a favor. It is a favor. It's a favor. Uh, for you folks, anything. If uh, these are critical values of Z, if alpha is 0.05 and the test is two-tailed, then the critical values of Z are plus and, plus and minus 1.96. That should be familiar to you from interval estimation. When you, you needed to input a value of Z, you looked to the confidence level. And when, when the confidence level was 95%, that is when alpha was 0.05, the critical value of z was plus and minus 1.96. When it's a two-tailed test and alpha is 0.01, the critical values of z are plus and minus 2.58. When the test is one-tailed and alpha is 0.01, the critical value of z is 2.33 and when alpha is 0.05, it is 1.65. Now, both of these values will be negative when you're testing for negative difference. That is, when the research hypothesis is that x bar is less than mu. And they will be positive when you're testing for positive difference. That is, when the research hypothesis is that x bar is greater than mu. Okay? Are there any other questions? <coughs> we then simply need to uh, place these scores into this formula. X bar 2.38 minus mu, which is 2.69, divided by S, which is 0.88, over the square root of N minus 1, which is 21. And we get back to my standard old, trusty, reliable calculator. 20 years old. Over 20 years old. Never replace the battery. I think this is magic. Uh, let's see. I don't know how you folks do this, but I do it. The square root of 21, we then invert that. We multiply that by 0.88. We invert that and we multiply it by the difference here, which is minus 0 0.31. Uh, well, that's clever. You have to hit the right buttons. Don't hit the clear button at any time in this operation. I think that is uh, minus 1.61. Close. 
I wouldn't worry about it. <coughs> if you recall, the uh, critical value of Z of T was plus and minus 2.831. The obtained value is minus 0.61. Does everybody agree that we fail to reject the null hypothesis? Are there any questions? Is there any doubt at all that we fail to reject the null hypothesis? Okay. That's problem three. Let me just go through problem four. And then you folks have a task to do and I just have to stand outside and appear threatening. <laughs> Can you ask a question? No, Karen, I'm afraid not. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, we said that Z critical was just 2.831. No, right? T critical. I was. mean, T critical, I'm sorry. Yes. 2.831. Just positive 2.831. Plus, plus and minus. Oh, plus or minus, okay. Sorry. Because the test was two tiled. Right. Okay. Question four. Are there any, before I go on, are there any other questions? Question four. In a random sample of 400 African American voters, 54.5% indicated they voted for Gore in the last presidential election. If Gore gained 49.7% of all votes cast, depending on how you count Florida, <laughs> the uh, Test the proposition that he, Gore, was significantly more popular among African Americans. First of all, would everybody agree that we're into situation four here? We're dealing with proportional data. Let's see if we can shortcut this. This, is a, this involves... We're going to have to shoot you in a second, Karen. Yeah. One more cough. That's all you're allowed. Um... I'm quite lost now. This involves a z-test. I know that much. And we're in situation four where we're dealing with proportional data. First of all, what is the critical value of z? You, you folks can do this. You've got the little two by two now. You need to decide two things. I'm trying to... <coughs> you need to decide two things, yes? I'm, cause I'm, this, this is where you do me a favor. <laughs> you need to decide the level of alpha and you need to decide whether the test is one or two tailed to determine the critical value of Z. No, 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 no. It's all right. We've, we've got volunteers here. You're told that the level of alpha is 0.01. Let me ask you, in this particular question, should the test be one or two tailed? Let, let, me, let me read the critical part of the, the scenario again. We're, we're going to take, it's now beyond, because you took three or four there, it's now beyond the bullet in the head. We're going to take something sharp. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. If I, I, I've, I've survived all semester with the mixture of heavy and light equipment out back here. Test the proposition that Gore was significantly more popular among African Americans. What is the research hypothesis? No, no, we, you, you, you have it right, but you have it wrong. You have it... Well, let me use this piece, sheet of paper. I'm so... Okay, so we're dealing here with 
We're in situation four. We're dealing with proportional data. So we're not dealing with X bar and mu. We're dealing with P subscript S and P subscript U. And, and so you're correct in saying that, that the research hypothesis is that the sample score will be greater than the population score. That Gore was significantly more popular amongst African Americans who are represented by the sample than he was amongst voters in general. So should the test be one or two tiled? The test should be one tiled. So if the test should be one tiled and alpha is 0.01 and you're testing for positive difference, what is the critical <laughs> value of Z? If alpha is 0.01, you're testing, f it's a if alpha is 0.01, it's a one-tailed test, and you're testing for positive difference. Plus 2.33 or minus 2.33? Plus 2.33. Is there anybody else who would say that that is the critical value of Z? There seems to be agreement. Plus 2.33? Sold. We now have to simply compute the observed or the obtained value <coughs> of Z. And that is given by the formula P subscript S minus P subscript U, that is the equivalent to X bar minus mu, divided by the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of sample proportions, which is P subscript U multiplied by 1 minus P subscript U divided by N. What is P subscript, <coughs> what is P subscript S here? What is P subscript S? Is it 0.55? Well, let's, 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 really, let's go with uh, three decimal places. What would you say if that were the case? 0.545? P subscript S is 0.545. You're provided the information in the form of a percentage. You're told that amongst a sa random sample of 400 African-American voters, 54.5% indicated they voted for Gore. That is... In the sample, 54.5% voted for Gore. That is P subscript S equals 0.545. What, what does P subscript U equal? 0 0.497. 0 0.497. You're again pr told that you're provided this information in the form of a percentage. You're told that amongst... In, amongst all votes cast, 49.7% were cast in favor of Gore, so that P subscript U is 0.497. Divided then by P subscript U, which we just said was 0.497, multiplied by 1 minus that score, which is 0.503, divided by N, and you're told that the sample is of 400 voters, African-American voters. So we have 0.497 multiplied by 0.503 divided by 400. We take the square root of that and then multiply it by <coughs> with any... What did I do wrong? <laughs> oh, my life. No questions yet. I'm, I'm too far gone. I'm, I'm so in, involved now. You could put a plate of bangers and mash in front of me, and I, I wouldn't budge. You could put a case of Heineken in front of me, and I wouldn't budge. Ah, that's where we went wrong. We tried to get slick and clever.
I think it equals 1.92. It only took me a day and a half to, come, to get that, but I think the answer, the uh, observed value of uh, Z in this case is plus 1.92. You had a question. What did you get 0 0.503? 0 0.503 is 1 minus P subscript U. Isn't that right? P subscript U is 0.497, so 1 minus P subscript U is 1 minus 0.497, which I believe is 0 0.503. Okay? Are there any other questions? We come now to the acid test. Do you reject the null hypothesis or do you fail to reject the null hypothesis? Fail. Once again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We conclude then that gore was not significantly more popular amongst African Americans than amongst the electorate as a whole. Yes? You can uh, certainly do uh, question problem five. Uh, it is an example, again, of a situation in which n is small so that you need to conduct a t-test. Um, some of you don't have Appendix B with you. Two things. One, by doing this outside of class, you'll have to get yourself involved in the use of Appendix B, which will be useful for you in the exam. And second, on the day of the exam, you will need to bring a copy of Appendix B with you. Um, you can also bring a copy of Appendix A, rather than memorize those uh, four scores that I gave you, those four critical values of Z. But if you do bring a copy of Appendix A, you need to turn it in to me. And then I will redistribute them. Just to guard against somebody highlighting the four values. I've been tricked before. <laughs> I've been naive and trusting. Are there any questions about anything? <coughs> The short term causes of World War One, the effect of the Treaty of Versailles on World War Two, why Manchester United got beaten to death in Madrid. <laughs> no? Then we will meet again on Thursday when I will take care of any problems that you have concerning problem 5 on assignment 6 <laughs> and we will discuss, start to discuss uh, hypothesis testing 2 which is a situation in which you're comparing two sample means with one another rather than one sample mean with the population mean. Okay.